All right. What's up, everyone? If you are tuning in, you are tuning in to Mong Hip Hop Heritage Episode 1. I'm going to ask my guests to jump in as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All right. We got Sai. We got Villain. What's up, y'all? We got Ryan. What's up? What's up? Gary. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes. What's up, everyone? Right. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Everyone, tune in from wherever you are right now at the moment. Hope you guys are being safe. Hope you guys are with family, if not with loved ones or anything. Just make sure you're taking care of yourself personally. Um, again, you are tuning in to okay. Mong Hip Hop Heritage. Today is episode one, uh, origin story. And um, we're speaking pretty much based off on the topic today is uh, just kind of sharing a, a little bit of who we are. Um, I feel like that's that's something that's really important for us. So again, hip hop, Hmong hip hop heritage. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. This is created by Gary, Ryan, Sai, Villain, and me. Uh, again, we think this is really important. Uh, we're taking this time right now, especially during the pandemic and what's been happening in our world society right now. We're just taking some time to just give back. I feel like we, uh, us as uh, artists and hip hop uh, uh, people in general, we've been, uh, you know, seeking uh, growth for ourselves, and at the same time learning so much within the hip hop community and at the same time within our home community as well. So we just want to take time to kind of pretty much, uh, if anything, uh, help educate, right, by sharing our stories, our insights, um, what we have learned, experienced, and hopefully this will help build some sort of unity within our people, within uh, hip hop as well. Uh, and major thing is just to find progression in life, right? Um, and I think at the same time, hip hop has helped all of us, all five of us, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people could relate to, but it have helped all of us in our, our lives to progress. Uh, and that's whether it's through physical movement, mental, mentality or to even emotional uh understanding and even building uh fellowship so again thank you guys so much for tuning in if you guys are tuning in again today we are talking about origin stories my name is michael uh, lonka impact lore again um just a little quick introduction introduction of who i am uh, i've been dancing since uh the late 90 90s yeah uh, early 2000s um i'll say i started around uh the end of 1999 to 2000 i've been dancing for do you look at it it's part almost over 20 years now uh, i am dancing uh, with my crew underground flow a member of the kinjas um and yeah dude i mean i could keep talking but i would love to in let someone else talk and introduce himself so i'm just going to pass on to you know a villain first and then we'll keep going yeah villain Yo, all right. Yes. Uh, thanks, Impact. Uh, and thank, big shout out to everyone who's watching right now and tuning in. Um, my name is Long, Long Kulor. Uh, I go by the name of Villain. I represent Underground Flow and the Kinjis. I have been dancing for probably over 20 years now. And uh, I am an artist. I'm a choreographer. I'm also uh, I'm a b-boy. Uh, I'm a teacher. And uh, yeah. Moving it on, uh, that's just a little bit of who I am, and uh, we'll transition to G uh, Gary. Gary, introduce yeah. yourself. I have to, real quick, go get my battery to charge this, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just want to let y'all know. I'll be right sure. back. For sure. So we got All right, guys. Gary. Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Yang. I'm from uh, Fresno, California. Um, I've been breaking out here since uh, 1997, so, yeah, you guys can say it's kind of Kind of old school, but I'm right there within the uh, era of uh, what I think was a really good time in the uh, Fresno B-Boy community. And yeah, you know, I actively uh, break. Um, I teach here and there. I compete here and there. Um, I organize uh, locally, and I also help uh, others as well if they want to organize. Um, let's see. I uh, As a job, I work with uh, Parks and Rec. And I also with the, work with the school district as well. So, uh, yeah. Um, hey, um, I can't really hear you guys that well, so I'm gonna log in and log back out real quick too. Okay. So I'm gonna pass this on to uh, on to Munch. So go ahead, Munch. 
<clears throat> what's up guys thanks for tuning in first and foremost thank you guys so much for joining the podcast my name is ryan lee aka munch from sacramento california representing flexible flave crew i've been dancing since 2007 so for me it's actually only been 12 years i know 12 years sounds a lot but actually it's pretty short in my opinion uh, it takes a long time to learn and grow and know a lot of things right so again thanks you guys for tuning in i'm excited to have this talk with everybody and then i'm gonna go ahead and pass it up to my boy Sai. what's up Sai? hey what's up munch thanks for passing it on good evening viewers my name is Sai. uh people some people know me as cyborg um i've been dancing since 2008 i'm currently living in las vegas nevada uh before this pandemic i was performing with the jabwalkies i performed in two of the shows called prism and dreams and also doors with china and we also did i also did their uh first halloween horror night season um so thank you guys again for coming in and viewing and checking us out i want to pass this on to uh the the twinjas i want to know yeah. twinjas out of you two who started dancing first mm. So, so again, today uh, we're talking about the origin story. So you guys are gonna hear a lot of uh, story how we all started dancing. And uh, again, this is experiences um, based off uh, uh, our experiences and hopefully these are will help guide and give some insight to uh, the future dancers, even the past dancers or um, people at the moment. Uh, again, I, I, if, before we answer that question, I also want to give a quick shout out before um, I forgot to do this in the beginning, but I just want to give a shout out to some of uh, some amazing Hmong dancer out there too. Uh, I know the five of us uh, are only a small representation of our Hmong uh, hip hop community. And um, I just want to give a shout out to Shayna Vu. Uh, you know, we got Aiden Shong, you know, Serena Ramoran from Macula Traits, Paige Yang, you know, we got uh, Soul Rival from OKC. Looney Tune from Minnesota, uh, near the floor duster from uh, Wisconsin, uh, Air Steph from Sacramento. Uh, these are just um, just to name some um, some uh, Hmong dancers out there, Hmong crews. Uh, if you guys don't know them, make sure you check them out or research who they are. Uh, YouTube is pretty strong right now with like historic footage. Um, so check that out. But yeah, so today we're talking a lot about origin story. And also I just asked us who started dancing first, right? Uh, I think my brother Villain uh, could could tell the story a lot better than he usually does that. So I'll let Villain speak on that. So how, who started dancing, Villain? All right. Um, so I'm going to try to keep this as short as we can, so we could keep the ball moving. Um, so um, um, so how Impact and I we started dancing. We actually started dancing at the exact same time and place. Um, one day we both uh, we this is before we even knew we both like dancing. I didn't even know he liked dancing. He didn't even know I liked dancing. One day we walked, I met him like in the in our living room randomly one day. I, I don't remember the date, but we met up at the same time, uh, same place, which is in our living room, small, small as living room, carpeted floor, you know. Um, and then I looked at him, he looked at me. I, I was like, what do you do here, man? He was like, I'm gonna start learning how to practice. I'm gonna start practicing how to break today. And I was like, me too. And then we looked at each other. I was like, tight, let's, let's do this together. And then that's pretty much how it started. And then we just started dancing with each other ever that's since cool. then. So. It really was just like a, I feel like maybe just like a divine twin kind of connection thing, but um, we we weren't like, in, we, like we didn't inspire each other to dance. Like I wasn't dancing first and then he wanted to dance. It wasn't, he started dancing and I wanted to dance because he started, we kind of just found it at the same time and just kept it ever since then. Just kept up with it. You could draw in impact anything wow. as well. Yeah, so I feel like, I, left out. I think that was one reason why my brother, uh, Bill and I, we, um, still dance till this day because uh i didn't inspire him he didn't inspire me you know we both wanted to do it uh somehow at the same time you can call it a twin twin kind of thing but uh, i feel like uh that was something that we we value a lot is that um although we we highly influence and inspire each other um he wasn't the reason why i started dancing right like and he, i wasn't the main reason he started dancing we were we were just pillars that help each other um through our dance career but at the same time uh, um because of us wanting to do it at the same time and for our own personal reason. And that's, I feel like that's one reason why I understand why we continue to dance still today and still do what we do. Cause we do, we do really like it for ourselves. So I'll say that, um, that little notion to add to that story, but. 
What, what triggered that, that moment? Dope. That's dope. Yeah. You know, it was interesting. I don't know what triggered that moment. I just knew. I I knew. I I think I was coming from downstairs. I know I wanted to uh, practice, right? I wanted to break, and and for some reason he walked through the kitchen because uh, we have the kitchen connected to the living room. He walked in and we just met, and he's like, "What are you doing here?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna practice breaking." And he's like, "All right, well, me too." So, bro. And then we just did it. And, like it was weird. Yeah. And it, it, the yeah. funny part is, like, it seemed like uh, we both was already kind of practicing already. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. cause like. Like he had some movement and I was like, oh, yeah. I want to learn this too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I learned yeah. in 1990, right? And I was yeah. like trying to figure out what the hell it was. So it was cool because <laughs> it was cool because we 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 came to we came, I think I think that was just pretty much our first experience meeting each other at practice, at session. Because yeah. we both wanted to dance at the same time, right? Same day, same yeah. moment. So we pretty much caught, caught we pretty much caught each other at session because we came there wanted to practice a certain move. You know what I mean? So that's why we were like, it's, it seemed as if we were already practicing, which kind of was, you know, but then but, if but anything. To dance is, is definitely like a lot of influence. So from like our, our yeah. peers, like our, our uh, older brothers and sisters to mm -hmm. even cousins that we, we know of from Fresno too, you know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely um, influence from other people as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, How did you guys see? That's dope. Yeah. What was that? How did you guys see breaking? How did I we see breaking? My first remember of one of my first uh, first memory, honestly, was uh, I went to a, a it was like a, a mom party, like house, some kind of party, and I remember seeing people doing windmills. Right. That was that was one fond memory, and one one of it was also I went to my cousin in Fresno. I think that they were breaking with the Smurf. I'm not. I think I think they were breaking with Smurf that time. Yeah, yeah, they were so, they were Smurfs. Uh -huh. yeah. I was at the, I was in their house and they brought me to their bedroom and there were it was a bunch of home people just like practicing breaking and then uh, they would ask me to do it. And I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do it because you know, I don't know how to do it during time. Mm -hmm. But um, that was one another memory and then I also have memory of my older brothers and them always breaking the garage, you know, like messing around. Okay. Um, and during that time, it's either it was just for fun or it was just kind of like uh, it was a cool thing, you know what I mean? Um, but that was my memories. I also remember seeing a um Tuja Shong video, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, the comedian from Minnesota. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I remember seeing uh, uh, um, a VHS tape for him, and uh, my mom and dad somehow brought it home, and it was his comedy live. And at the end, he had some Mon B boys uh breaking on stage, so that was some, one of my memory of uh seeing breaking too. So that was something, um. And during that time, I was breaking to trance music. You know what I mean? Like it was not yeah. hip hop yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, and my experience during time, it was I didn't really have no hip hop experience yet too. I just been seeing like little sparks. But I mean, Dylan can add on if you want. But um, yeah, I yeah. think that's you. Pretty much, it's pretty much very similar. So uh, to move to move forward, you know, like I would love to hear everyone like uh, someone else's experience, like their mm -hmm. journey. How they started. Well, I got a question for you guys, real quick. Um, okay. So, how did Underground Flow get started? Um, well, Underground Flow, it was uh, before Underground Flow. We had, of course, an, a, a different crew. You know, Psycho Six. Uh, we started uh, in middle school, um, but Underground Flow was just a bunch of uh, kids that were friends. And uh, we, before we got promoted, before we went to high school, we were like, since we're going to high school, we should make a crew, like a real crew, because we know that we're gonna be it was just in case people wanted to battle us we'll have a crew you know to back each other up that's what it was so um it was pretty much just with a bunch of friends that were breaking at that time and uh we wanted and it was with yeah yeah it was a very diverse group too you know it was uh it had a a very diverse group of, of kids and we were trying to figure out a name we, we stumbled upon underground flow and uh ever since then it was just like a friendly kind of crew you know that just had each other's back and then from there on, it just continued. To, it just, yeah, it just kept growing. We just kept repping it. We just kept, uh, we started out very underground too. That's how we got the name Underground Flow because we were pretty much not, we didn't really present ourselves out there like that. We kind of went to events or competitions and then we would disappear right after that. Um, and then people would know of us and then, but then they would never see us again. So we had that kind of like, that was like our, Trademark in the beginning, if anything, uh, if we didn't intend to do that, but it was just like that. Everybody was like, "You guys are so underground." We're like, "That's kind of like interesting how you know that name came about too." So, um, 
that's pretty much how it started. I'm really just keeping it short, you know. Uh, in fact, if you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I guess I'll just talk a little bit on how it was back then, right? Like, um, Bill mentioned the underground part. Um, back then, you know, there was no internet. Like, at least I, we didn't have internet, right? Uh, uh, the people that had internet was either rich or have connection to internet, right, during that time. But um, if anything, there was uh, obviously more uh, community involvement. Like, you really had to go to the events, right? So, like, people heard of us through through only maybe, like, actions through one event, right? And so they probably just hear about, all oh, these two twins or this this crew call under and they're so underground so that was something that like uh that's how the time when we started it was like that too so i'll only share that just kind of uh give a, a little i guess um time frame where where we started you know and um yeah so i'll, I'll just share that based off of how underground flow started because uh uh again it was a bunch of friends like villain say just trying to uh continue doing what we love to do and during that time it was uh breaking you know, uh, and during that time, we were getting heavily involved into the breaking culture. And that's what hip hop culture is during that time. Before that, we were still just beginners learning what the heck this thing was. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have the same experience where, you know, when you were officially into the hip hop culture and like you're start discovering that. Right. Um, yeah. So and well, obviously, you know, and, and, yeah. yeah, but real quick, too, I would I would throw yeah. it out before we, we, we move on. Uh, we didn't know that breaking was hip hop. To be honest, I think our intro was just breaking, you know. So yeah. like we were very much at that time, we didn't know that was it was part of four elements. We didn't know, you know, it was under this umbrella, right? So uh, right now it was just like that beginning stage of like falling in love with something that we had no idea yet, right? Um, so that's pretty. Just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. So like, um, I'm mean, just move forward. I would love to um to know more about uh, you guys too. So I'll ask uh, Sidus like um like did you for you, I know you're even though you, you you're not a a a, a well, I'm sure you could you could you could do some breaking move if you if we tell you to, but like at the same time, I know we know you heavily more in like the freestyle realm to like other type of uh dance style to like choreo. Like um maybe um uh, maybe tell us a little bit like how you started and why, you know, like as a as a dancer right now. Um, you know, a little a little information who you are like um for me I, I started dancing in high school. Funny story, I kind of dabbled in almost everything. You know, my first experience with break dancing, I saw my oldest brother doing a windmill. I thought it was just amazing, you know. And and then going on to middle school, all of my friends were break dancing. And it and then we had there was an instructor there, but I never took it because I was just a really shy kid. Going on into high school, um, I actually joined a hip hop club because of an ex-girlfriend at that time. So I was kind of trying to impress that girl, but <laughs> I did I did so bad at my first performance that I completely stopped dancing for a full year. And it wasn't until maybe my junior or, or senior year that I decided that, you know, I wanted to dabble into it again because um, at that time I was playing basketball and I loved basketball, but my parents were just like, no, we don't want you to play basketball. We don't want to play you to play any sports. We just want you to study. And so, you know, in, in secretly in my bedroom, I went on YouTube and uh, I looked up how to dance. And the first video that popped up was um, Mr. Wiggles. You know, he he, he has um, he has some really dope popping videos up. And I was like, you know, that's that's pretty cool, you know? And so I just, I researched Mr. Wiggles, figured out he was in electric boogaloos and I watched a bunch of electric boogaloo videos. I was like, you know what? Tight. I want to pop, you know, like I, I want to pop. And so yeah. from there, I, I YouTube again, I'm a YouTube kid. Like this is how I got started in hip hop. It was YouTube. And so I just looked up how to, how to pop, you know? And, and the first video I popped up was how to do the Fresno by uh, this guy named Assad Invent from uh, the Bay and you me and him, we and him, we're, I met him, which is really awesome. Cause it was so weird. Cause technically he's my first instructor online. And so from there, I, I started popping. I started learning a lot of freestyle and, you know, I, I just hung out with a lot of my high school friends from West campus high school in Sacramento. And they were all B boys. That's it. I only danced with B-Boys and I was just trying to pop. So I was trying to figure all of this out. And, you know, I started meeting more and more P 
people who danced and I started getting tips from um, these other dancers who were into choreography who were telling me about isolations. And so, you know, I'm gaining knowledge as I'm gaining friends. And it was just quite a journey for me because, you know, after high school, once I graduated, um, I was uh, sessioning with my good friend, Sylvester Vang. And he was a locker. Uh, you know, he just he he was this funky little locker, and you know he introduced me into my first shout out to Sylvester, man. Yeah, Sylvester, yeah, that's man. the buddy that we also know. Yeah. yeah, that's the man right there. Man. He's a super talented cat, and that's you know he, he introduced me into my first dance crew. You know, Funky Fresh from Sacramento, California, and you know my my whole journey just kind of soared from there, and my connections and. My lifelong friends that I've met along the way, you know that that was my journey. Hi, dude. That's you know uh, you have a similar brought up uh, uh, like influence like Mike Song, <laughs> like uh, he he saw a Mr. Wiggle uh, video too, and like he went in it like that too. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Mike Song, awesome man. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah, dude. That's tight. Damn, that's really good to know, man. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, just want to uh, um, uh, talk to, uh, I guess, our uh, audience that are engaging right now with us. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in still. Yeah. Um, feel free to write down some questions, you know what I mean? Uh, we'll do our best to answer some of the questions toward the end of uh, our, our topic today, which is the uh, origin story. Um, so, yeah, again, go back to our topics, you know what I mean? So, again, we're talking about um, pretty much the question, right? Our mm -hmm. main question was, like, how and why did we get into dancing? So uh, maybe, maybe we'll go into... You know who? Let's, let's go into, let's go, Gary. Let's go to Fresno. Let's go to Fresno a little bit. What's up, Fresno? All right, what's up, guys? Shout out to Fresno. Uh, sh shout out to SAC, too, man. You guys are all from SAC. I feel like I'm the only guy from Fresno here. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. He's still part of the family. Yeah, right, right. Man, I, I have to say, the way that I started out here, um, man, back in the late 90s, I had a lot of influence from my uh, my older brother and my uncles. Um, because at that time they were breaking and to me my first memory of seeing breaking in front of me was my uncles and them breaking at um at uh with the um with the polo chain you know and at my grandma's house yeah and 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 they were breaking they were doing windmills in front of uh Nuru Tanana, right and yeah. and i and i remember it, it was just like it was so cool but at the same time it's like dude you guys are gonna hit the tanang like you guys need to be careful you know like like don't <laughs> hit that you know so because uh yeah, like she had like that, that those big that's old, a big no no. Like, that's yeah. a big no no, man. Yeah, don't, man. Don't hit that. <laughs> Especially exactly. breaking. Yeah, dude. And like I remember No control, like, baby, no control. No control, <laughs> man. And and it wasn't a big house. It was like a small house because I was raised out there at uh, Kings Canyon at night. Um out there near the old juvie. You know, if it, if anybody knows that side of town, um the juvie, the old juvie ain't there no more, but you know, it was it was pretty straight up, um, pretty hood out there, you know. Yeah. And so, and so, we had a lot of influences, but that's like my fondest memory, um, seeing them, and they influenced me uh, into breaking because, you know, as I got older, um, as I got older, I wanted to get down because my older brother was getting down, and he was a little bit heavier than me, but he had the heart, you know, and it inspired me because we were breaking together, but I just kind of kept pursuing it as he stopped, you know what I mean? And um, and at the time, it, it was a very tough era because it was just like uh, like everyone, everybody was doing power moves. You know what I mean? So with this whole power move era, like it it, it was a fantastic time because I, I remember going to like the DJ parties and, uh, you know, like the little Hmong DJ parties. Uh, shout out to uh, DJ Styles. He used to throw some of the dopest ones way back in the early 2000s. And um, you know, and I just remember it was like, you know, you went to the parties to meet girls, but you also went there to battle somebody. You know, if you, if you saw a cat out there that like you didn't recognize, you know, you just straight up caught him out at the DJ parties and you just started breaking. And the music wasn't like, you know, it's funny how you how, how you were talking about the techno music. And I do like I, I have fond memories of breaking the techno back then. You know, I I remember watching uh, Flying Steps old, old video way back then where Flying Steps oh, and them. But, you know, they were breaking to that techno music. So, yeah. you know, at the time, like, you know, but as I kept uh, pursuing breaking, 
Um, I, I noticed that a lot of people came and, you know, they came and went and, um, and, and I just started looking into it more and getting more involved in it and learning about it more. So, you know, I just believe that like, if you really love something, you know, you'll do the research. So. That's true. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, let me ask this since, uh, um, I, I'm interested too, like how was like the Hmong dance community for you during that time? Like, I know, especially uh, uh, you come from a more Hmong, Hmong crew, right? And like uh, even your uh, community was more Hmong. So maybe we'll, uh, I know we're going to dive into this question more later on, but maybe if yeah. you want to touch a little bit on that. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to shout out to all the OG crews. Um, some of the most influential ones that uh, that I've met and have, that I've um, gone through, you know, is like Bombs, Smurfs. Horizon, DIS, uh, Puppet Masters, Wizards, um, uh, just a whole lot more names. Um, and back then, like, I remember, you know, the late 90s, early 90s, like, there must have been more than, like, you know, a handful of crews in Fresno. And, and back then, a lot of these crews were just straight up, um, like, family crews, you know? Like, yeah. like, it was like you, your brother, your cousins, and then... You know, y'all went a battle against these other brothers and cousins because, you know, because you heard they had a crew. So, um, but definitely, you know, it was, uh, it was, you know, the, the Hmong breaking community crews out here, um, it was at the majority because a lot of people were breaking over here in the southeast side of Fresno um, because it was, uh, it was tough growing up out here on the southeast side. Um, you know, there was a lot of gangs and a lot of violence and a lot of people used breaking as an outlet. And, okay. you know, oh, and really? there was a saying, you know, there was a saying that, like, if you were breaking, like, the gangsters would just leave you alone, you know? So a lot of people started breaking, you know? But it also went the other way, too, you know? Because some people, you know, they did get into gangs and they did break, you know? So that's just, that's just part of history right there. Totally. I could see that, hey, too. I, I have a lot of friends that, I, that, yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead, back. I'll oh, go after you. No, no, you good. Oh no! I was just I was curious because like I wanted to hear how you got your b-boy name. Man. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But before so, the, before the b-boy name though, like um, before the b-boy name, the I want to uh, also give uh, Munch the opportunity to talk about his history a little bit too. Like just quick before you we dive into b-boy name, because I want yeah, to know sure. everyone's b-boy name. Like uh, Munch, I don't know how you got your b-boy name, Cyborg. I like I want to know how you got your yeah. dance name. You know, I mean, like we got to the point where just dance name in general. So before we dive into that, how about um. Let's hear a little bit from Ryan, like um, Munch. You know, you're part of Flexible Flay from Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you started with a, 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 a crew before that too. Maybe uh, let us know a little bit how you start and like uh, your first crew and how you guys even got together. Maybe your, you know, how you start. Give us a little origin on you, real quick. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty crazy, man. I actually uh, I started dancing in 2007. You know, I was uh, eighth grade, and I saw my nephew. You know, he had just, you know, he moved to Minnesota and he came back. But when he came back from Minnesota, I'm talking about this dude is doing Flair Windmill 90, Flair 90s. And I'm just like, yo, what the hell is all of that? I'm talking about he's doing like Flair 3 round 90, Flair Windmill 2 round 90. I'm just like, yo. And, you know, I'm be real, man. You know, in the beginning, it was, it was about girls. You know what I'm saying? I saw, I saw my nephew and he was popular and I was like, damn, you know what? I want to learn how to do that too. But also remember, man, uh, when I first started, I was actually a super big kid. I was like almost 300 pounds. So, you know, doing windmills and nineties and flares wasn't easy. So it was just kind of like, shit. So what can I learn how to do? And he's like, well, I'll teach you how to do some scissor kicks. So, okay, cool. I'll learn some scissor kicks. So, man, that's like my first move right there, scissor kicks. Man, I couldn't do anything. So all I got, got on my hands just started hopping around like, yeah, I break. Yeah. And Yo, then, scissor you know, kicks was a move that I, I I couldn't do, just so you know. It was hard oh, for man. me. Those are hard for me, man. <laughs> yeah, I think I was naturally strong upper body-wise, so it was kind of like easy for me to get up there and kind of just move around. You know, but uh, my first crew, it was actually a crew uh, from SAG. It's called the Rhythm Rockers. I actually joined Rhythm Rockers in 2008. I actually got recruited from Marcus Edgerlin, who's now an underground flow. Shout out to Journey, man. That's that's my first official breaking mentor, man. That's the guy that really taught me about hard work and all that stuff, man. Because I used to I used to bullshit a lot, you know. I used to think I worked hard, but then I would see this dude every day. He would always talk to me about, like, yeah, man, I'm trying to get in this crew called Underground Flow. 
you know, but then, you know, they, you got to be good to get in. So, you know, I'm trying my best. So every day I would see this dude, shirt off, push-ups, 100 push-ups, always yelling at me, do push-ups. Why aren't you doing push-ups? You know why you can't flex? Because you can't do no push-ups. And, I, you know, I'm just like, oh, damn. All right. And I was really inspired by that, man, because I actually met all those dudes through a video game first, you know, because my older brother, he was he just started breaking probably like a couple months, almost half a year after I did. And my older brother was already my older brother, Ricky, who kind of inspired me too. you know, a lot of people don't know, man, like I dance and, you know, everybody kind of knows me in the scene as this guy who who could dance and rock. But in my opinion, man, my older brother, bro, I've always thought my older, older brother was better than me. You know what I'm saying? For the short amount of time he was breaking, because everybody would be like, yo, like, damn, Ricky, you hella funky. And I'd be on the side like, man, I could dance too. <laughs> you know? And so we all got kind of got together because, you know, I remember Marcus would always talk to us about, you know, like, yeah, you know, you, we can go to competitions. There's actually things that you can do. You know, we can compete and stuff like that. We'll go battle people. And, you know, so when we first started battling, you know, I was supposed to go do a battle with them at Luther Burbank. We went and called Unleashed Crew out. Yeah, yeah shout out to Unleashed Crew, my boy. Shout Dummy, out Unleashed, everybody man. out there, man. Chocolate, you know, Emerald, all these guys, you know what I'm saying? And those are the first guys I ever met. And the first dude I ever battled, man, was my best friend. You know, in high school, they they saw us breaking together. Like, they just, oh, you two just started breaking? Cool, y'all gonna battle. And then eventually, you know, we kind of just, we built that bond. And then, you know, 2008 marcus was like hey what's up you want to get down with rhythm rockers and i was like man hell yeah so that's how we got in that's how i got in rhythm rockers and yeah man that was the first crew so 2008 i think the trailer's still up super hey, embarrassing man, i i remember rhythm rockers <laughs> that's the craziest thing ever man i, I remember rhythm rockers because i remember um on journey too during yeah that time, so it was, it was marcus sam and jose that i yeah. knew at the time, I didn't, wow. even know, I, didn't, I didn't even know we had, like, Northside members, such as Tiny Tim, San Juan, and Trix. You know, all I knew was I just knew Marcus, I just knew Jose, and I just knew Sam, you know, because we all went to high school together. So I would see Sam. Sam's this goofy white guy looking like a skateboarder at that time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got Jose. Jose was the breaking instructor, so Jose would always come around. And then I had Marcus, you know, who I really looked up to at that time because I was like, man, I want to be like this dude. You know, like this dude, he's working hard. And, you know, he's always talking about it. And I'm telling you, nonstop, man. Marcus would always talk about it nonstop. Every time he sees him, why aren't you doing push ups? You need to push ups every day, nonstop. I was like, damn, Marcus, all right, man. <laughs> so, yeah, man, that was my first crew, Rhythm Rockers, 2008. That's what's up, man. I mean, dude. It's interesting to see the connection from uh, your your beginnings, well, even with us, because like those are all our, our younger crewmates during that time, you know. Yeah. So um, it's dope to see the connection in that, you know. So it's great to see that, you know, how like if anything, like we might not sometime be in the same time zone or, or generation time, but uh, hip hop is so important that way where it unites us in many timelines, right? Yeah. And, uh, whether we we have impacted each other physically during time or not, it's usually sometimes it's the people that you are around that kind of ripple effects right so yeah. you know it's really dope man to see the connection you know, like right now like it makes me um even like interesting to dig more into like uh, marcus in their journey too like how they were you know to see more about you so that that's something that's dope so yeah, yeah. that's right man well let's dive into your name munch i mean munch is an interesting <laughs> name bro like you know, we all have interesting names you know we got villain in the house we got cyborg in the house you know we have integra in the house come on man like so impact too man let, uh, yeah impact you know so like you know I'll, you know who want to start about me since much is talking i don't mind you just continuing talking about uh you know yeah uh, how did we get our dance name you know I mean, again if you tune in we're just doing the origin story you know what i mean uh yes, sir. Yes, getting, sir. letting y'all get to know all of us a little personal before we dive into more deeper topics uh, yeah. uh but, um, and if if anyone has a dance name drop it in the comment i want to know what your dance, dance name, name is all right so anyone in the comment whoever's tuning in right now drop your dance name or yeah let us know who you are. I see you ran in one. Yeah. I see you ran in one. All right. Yeah. All right, let's go, Munch. Man, Munch. Oh, so I used to have a bunch of weird names, man. <laughs> I was pretty embarrassed. But, yeah, I was actually, before I was called Munch, my name was GX. That stand for gravity times 10. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was a big kid breaking, like I said, when, when I Gravity times 10? Yeah. Yeah, gravity times Yo. ten. So technically, my name is gravity 
gravity before I knew who gravity actually was. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but then I remember, and it's funny because I got the name from Marcus. You know, uh, we used to train at my boy Terry's house. Shout out to Terry, man. That's uh, That was one of the dudes who also really inspired me. He doesn't break anymore. But, dude, this dude, we used to call him Earth Hop Master. He had hand hops for freaking days. And Villain and Impact, I think you guys were at his house one time because I remember there's a video of all you guys. That little mole house was packed in the living room you guys were breaking, in the garage, and outside on the freaking driveway everybody was breaking. Yeah. I, remember, I remember that. And then... Yeah. yeah, but we were there, and I remember we spent one whole, literally, we spent one whole summer at Terry's house. Like, not, we didn't go home for three months. And his parents were cool with it. They're, they're just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know. And it was me, Marcus, Terry, his brother Zia, you know, and we had, like, the rest of Rhythm Rockers, right, which is, like, a bunch of home kids that were from Oak Park, you know. So I remember, and shout out to Red, too, Lee, you know, Terry's older brother also. Uh, we were breaking and I remember one time like, you know, I was always eating and I always had snacks and I remember Marcus was making the trailer for Rhythm Rockers 2008 and he was just like, he looked at me and he just said, I fucking hate your name. I'm going to change it. You know, what I'm going to call you. We call you much because all you fucking do is eat. You're always snagging. Every time I see you, you got food. You always snagging. You always got chips. Something's in your mouth. So I'm going to call you much. And I started laughing. I was just like, all right, that works. And then, yeah, man, it's stuck ever since, man. Every time, every time somebody sees me much. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah. It sounds better than calling you Ryan. All right. Cool. Go ahead. So, yeah, man, that's how I got my breaking name, man. So Marcus, again. <laughs> Nice, nice. But yeah, but uh, yeah. What about you, Cy? Cyborg. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, um, I I was I'm probably one of those guys who never got given a name. Um, I just kind of put that name down during the battle. I was like, I don't have a nickname, so I'm just gonna write something out. And I was like, Cyborg. I'm gonna go with Cyborg and. You know, I, I've actually been giving names by other friends. You know, I've had uh, my friend Joe Remedy. He, he called me Syracha for, for, for quite a bit. He kept trying to make that tagline for me. It didn't quite stick with people, um, you know, and you, I, I think everybody just kept calling me Cyborg, and it just kind of stuck. So, you know, that's my origin story for that name. And yeah. uh, what, about, what about you, Twinges? How did, how did the name Villain and the name Impact come up? Man, uh, mine was pretty simple. I mean, I no one named. I was just like you just like no one, no one named me. I was just trying to find a name with the M in it. And I remember seeing a box of uh, K Swift shoes, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna take the K off and put the M on it and be M Swift. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't make sense, right? And I was <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense, right? And then like, uh, I just remember, I just remember driving, um. Driving home from like work during that time, uh, I was I was working at Togo Basket Robin in high school, and I remember driving home, and I don't know what it was, but something just popped in my head that said impact. It was weird, like whatever, uh, like maybe let's say it's yeah, it was like either either I was thinking about trying to name during that time, or maybe who knows, man, maybe it was something. In fact, I was I was there with you when so. when you found your name, man. We yeah. saw a truck yeah. that said impact on it. That's oh, how really? it was oh, oh, like. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then it, okay. it, we saw it, it, our driving. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, <laughs> Impact. I, I literally maybe that was right because I remember talking to Villain following too. Like Villain, I'm gonna call yeah. myself Impact, and he was like, Yeah, yeah and, I, and, yeah, and yeah, I, I just so confirmed it. Out. So I, yeah. yes, I confirmed it with you. I was like, Yeah, yeah. Dude, I remember impact. Villain. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna call myself Impact, but I'm gonna take out the I and, and make it hip hop. You know what I mean? And put the M in it because I was looking for something with the M. And then mm. villain, oh, that's Ty. And during time, villain, I think you already got your name. Villain was already villain already during time calling himself. I, I believe. Right? I feel like could talk more about that. Yeah. How'd um, you get villain? Yeah. 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 Um. So, in the beginnings, like before we even were thinking of a calling, we didn't even know uh, of like calling ourselves a name or giving names or whatever. My older brother used to call uh, Impact and I the twin villains, and uh, uh, so yeah, mm. so so that's the first time I ever even like thought of villain right that name right so he used to call it the twin villains and then i eventually just pretty much like i think growing up too i was really into like the bad guys like in cartoons and comics like the villains right uh they oh, okay. they're just always cooler you know what i mean they always they had like uh a, a big goal whether that whatever it was whether that was for good or 
evil. You know, they were just like, you know, I feel like the energy, I just, I like the idea of a villain pretty much, right? So that's why I just ended up coining it after my uh, older brother giving us the name The Twin Villains. Um, I ended up just adopting that villain uh, kind of concept and uh, wanted okay. to be, yeah, just wanted to be the idea of it, you know, because I feel like it's hard to be a superhero because you got to do good all the time. And as a human being, you, you know, you could, you know, it's like, you're human, you know what I mean? You can't, it's, it's hard to always do good. I'm not saying that you can, but I'm just saying um, the ideology of a villain and uh, how I kind of perceive uh, sort of villains in a lot of just movies and cartoons at that time, I was really about it. So I wanted to be the idea. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Mm -hmm. dope, dope, dope. Yeah. I'm interested about, in Tiger. You know yeah. What about you, Gary? Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh man, I, th on, I, I man. my story, yeah, my story, it, it's got a lot of meaning. Um, first off, I want to say that uh, when I grew up breaking, we didn't really have b-boy names. Like that wasn't like a, like a thing, but it wasn't until, um, you know, later down the road and I want to say like 2006, 2007, when I was breaking around with uh, with Wizards and I, and, and I just remember these guys like, you know, one of my best friends right now, like he told me, he goes, hey man, like I think your your B1A should be Integra, you know? Like like they said it comically because the, the reason for that was because whenever I showed up to practice, like you would see my Integra. And if you guys know me personally, I'm like a really big car guy. You know, I still have like, you know, two cars right now, you know, one as a daily, one as a weekend car, you know? And I love ranching on them. And so I had this like, souped up Integra, I'm gonna tell you, I must've spent like at least 20 Gs in that car. I did everything from like, you know, a 99 conversion, JDM front conversion. I did everything myself. I went through like three engines, you know, <laughs> uh, rims wow. left to right, paint jobs left to right. And, and, you know, and so whenever someone saw my car at practice, you know, they saw my Integra, then they knew I was there. And so that's how the name kind of was given to me. And not only that, they said that whenever I did my windmills, it was like uh, VTEC kicked in because they were hella fast back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so like, you know, the, the name, like, it, it just stuck, you know? Like, I, I never VTEC, really, that was good, man. Yeah, VTEC. Yeah, so, yeah, dude, that's the VTEC good. kicked in. And, and, you know, and so whenever someone saw my car at practice, you know, they saw my Integra, then they knew I was there. Wow. 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 We got, the, um, we got some other Minnesota brothers tuning in too, man. What's up, Finisher? How you doing, my oh, brother? Yeah, y'all don't know yeah, Finisher is doing yeah. some great work in Thailand right now. Shout out to Finisher. On Shout that. out to um, Finisher. Shout out to Luke. the Loonies. You know, what I mean? again, uh, if you guys are just tuning in, uh, just want to remind you guys today we're just talking about Orange Story, so we're just kind of having a ping pong conversation on like certain topics right now. Um, just kind of introduce ourselves to you guys so you got get to know us a little bit more before we dive into bigger topics which is, is going to be in episode two three and four so please stay right. tuned to that um but moving on how about like um you know i know um the topic of uh, our um our main thing is really about Hmong hip-hop ex uh, experience right uh and Hmong hip-hop heritage and how we were brought up and pretty much i know um you know um we want our we're doing our best, especially uh, during this time, to if anything help educate um, our people with our experience and our insights and our um, the education that we learn through even immersing ourselves within the hip hop culture. And again, we know the hip hop culture is a, a have many roots and within the black community and uh, many other uh, his, a community like the Hispanic community. And uh, I, I would like to per, uh, personally say that I also think that uh, Hmong, Hmong uh, a community, a Hmong culture have a big part in uh, hip hop really uh, in the States where we, where it comes from too, you know? And so if anything, um, well, how about let's dive into like the next topic is pretty much like, uh, how was the Hmong hip hop dance community like when we started dancing, right? Um, because I know we have different generation here right now. We have Gary from Fresno. I know there's a hev heavily, we know Fresno, right? Uh, there's a heavy population. That's probably one of the the uh, most small people compared to Minnesota, right? Uh, and uh, I know, shout out to Loon Tune. I'm pretty sure they, they have stories that I would love to hear from them too. And uh, uh, Lou in there. But uh, right now, like, I guess, I guess uh, maybe let's, let's start. I, I guess I'll talk a little bit about my experience. Um, from my experience of how the Hmong community was during our time when we Bill and I we started dancing, um, 
there wasn't a lot to be real with you um hip-hop we didn't even know what the heck we were doing what we were doing was definitely part of hip-hop culture but when we discover and dive into the hip-hop community and we start uh, falling in love with what hip-hop truly was you know and seeing people and uh meeting some of our superhero you think about it right because back then when you hear about dancer um you look up to them just like superheroes or like mentors or like people who who are like you know a big role model a figure so uh I definitely, I know from my experience during that time, my uh, my upbringing, um, there weren't a lot of Hmong people. Dylan and I, we were in a part, even our crew right now, uh, we don't have a lot of Hmong people besides Dylan and I, right? But even though we supported a lot of Hmong people in our entire brought up, right? Like, even, for example, in the Air Step crew, you know what I mean? Uh, I seen them and like, as much as like, I would love to have gotten them down, they were so dope as a Hmong crew that I told them straight up, I'd rather have y'all rep uh, 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 yourself at the Mon crew and, and 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 kill it. You know what I mean? If anything, I'm here to support. You know what I mean? Um, so I think my my experience of like during the, um, how our Mon hip hop dance community was during time, it wasn't really uh, a community yet. It was still growing, if anything, right? It was still um, uh, still finding its beginning, its roots, its connection with the uh, Hip hop community, right? Uh, even Villa and I, we were still like trying to discover ourselves, trying to discover what this thing we call hip hop is about, too. You know what I mean? And so uh, it was like a lot of trial and error, but like I feel like um, because of that, too, it was also a good thing because we uh, definitely was straight away from a lot of, of gang violence, right? Uh, there was during that time, there was still a lot of gang violence happening. And so I feel like definitely uh, hip hop and breaking in general was something that definitely provided a positive outlet. A sense of uh, identity, um, self discovery, right? And self challenging um, and growth. So, uh, yeah, I mean, villain could add on to this too, but I just know that it would, there, there are, are brought up, there was not that much uh, Hmong uh, involvement yet during that time, but there were still, uh, it was still growing. And when it got to that point where it was growing, it was, it was beautiful. I feel like villain and I, we, that's what something we always continue to do. And it's like we, we try our best to just support our Hmong community than trying to break them down, <laughs> you know? And like, uh, I mean, I, I, the only time I'll say this too, and I told, I told Gary this a while back, the only time I ever like really wanted to battle somebody in Fresno was, uh, not Fresno, but like um, uh, in my Hmong community was when uh, I heard a uh, wizard about wizard. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was the only time I heard about Wizard and Wizard was uh was saying how they want to battle us. And I just I don't know how I heard about this topic, but I mean, you know, I'll just be real. I mean, you know, this yeah. this is a place for us to be vulnerable and be really talk about truth. And yeah. like uh I remember uh uh we went to a competition in uh Peace to the Street. It was Peace to the Street from my memory. Oh. Peace to the street, right? And then uh for some reason Wizard was there, and some uh, some people pointed them out, and Bill and I, we were you know, Bill and I we were battle hungry during that time. So we were like, all right. And we started calling them out. And uh, there was this moment of me where I felt bad. I'll be real with you. I feel bad. I felt I felt wrong because I felt like I didn't, I didn't need to do that. Right. Uh, I didn't need to do that. And uh, I think that was the only time that was something I learned from myself, too, as a as a Hmong dancer was like, I didn't need to battle you because you you don't you're not doing anything. It's more about, OK, I, I should try to find a way to uplift each other. So we get better so we could beat the people out there that are good right now. You know, and that was something that that was one lesson that I learned from my experience with like uh engaging in the Hmong community during that time was uh I realized that dude, we were still young, we were still growing, like there was no one big yet, you know. And in order to do this, we need to help each other. And that was something I remember uh fondly of my experience. Yeah, I mean Villain could talk more about uh his experience, but uh that was one. I'll share that further. Yeah, I I would say the reason why like when we first started breaking, uh, there wasn't a huge Hmong community at that time because before that it was uh, Hmong people were really like Hmong community has like a big. There's a lot of people into gang, like right, and uh, during that time, and uh, Impact and I we have uh, seen because uh, breaking was a trend, right? That happened to all like the, the during that time in the Hmong culture, all the gangsters were breaking. So, so when breaking came into our Hmong community, all the all the all the gangsters were like, oh shit, this is kind of cool. Like, you know, they're part whether they were using to get girls, whether they were doing it for social, you know, kind of reasons, or uh, maybe a reason just to, you know, just to do something, right? I feel like a lot of the gangsters started doing that, right? That's how we were introduced to it. So during that phase of um, back in the like uh, late uh, late nineties, 
when uh, the trend of breaking stopped with the gangsters, right? So they just, so breaking was just a trend for gangsters, right? So that, that introduced us to breaking through during that stage of the gangsters doing it. And then when we started, all the gangsters, they stopped breaking, right? So that's why there, was, there wasn't that many Hmong people breaking when we started. But we heard about at that time, like, you know, uh, about uh, Smurfs from Fresno and the Wizards from Fresno because y'all had already been breaking, right? So, mm -hmm. so we already knew that, oh, shoot, there's a breaking crew from Fresno called Wizards and uh, Smurfs because our cousins were Smurfs. So um, that's how we got into That's how we saw breaking, too. And so moving forward, just to kind of, like, explain, like, the like the Hmong, the Hmong community then and why they weren't that many. Um, you know, and then later on, later on when we started breaking, uh, there was a breaking club and that breaking club was at James Rudder, you know, a big shout out to Big John. You know, he, he was a supervisor that actually organized that, that club for a, lot of, uh, for a lot of kids, you know what I mean? And uh, that's how, uh, and at that time, you know, Hmong people uh, saw it at our school too and they eventually pick it up. And that's how, there's this, that's how the, the wave of like, kind of like new, generation age of like younger Hmong uh, b-boys and b-girls you know so it's not just b-boys we had also b-girls um, that were doing it too that were Hmong you know so um, that was like the scene then and then as we transition as we kind of transition our journey of like breaking uh, you know the air steer pops they pop they started uh, they started popping up and then a bunch of other crews started popping up and then uh, yeah, I remember that story that Impact was saying too about Wizard because in the end like I think uh, for me, my initial goal for myself was never to compete against uh, my people, right? If anything, I was looking for, like, who is the best right now? You know, who's the best? And then it wasn't pointing at, like, the Hmong people, right? I, but I, again, you know, like, it, it was just more so, like, let's challenge the best and, and, and help each other. But while at the same time, you know, really challenge who is, you know, supposedly the best out there right now. And yeah. um, I think my intention at that time as a young, hungry b-boy, it was like, yeah, dude, like, who's good? You know, I, I want to test myself with you guys, you know? So it was like that. Um, but we did initiate a battle. That was my first, again, like in fact said, call out battle with any Mon crew. And it was just, it was just a test. It was like, yeah, we heard you guys wanted to, you know, battle us. And we, at, at that time, I was anxious too. I was like, I would never battle a Mon crew, so let's do it. You know, but yeah, but that, that's that. Hey, but we did battle uh, uh, like people like Uno and um, Uno, their uh, their friend. Yeah. I forgot his name, but we did yeah. power battle back then. Man. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know that we were supposed to battle <laughs> Uno. We were yeah, supposed to battle Uno know. and Era. We were supposed to battle yeah. Uno and Era, yeah. but Villain and I ended up battle Uno and one of his homeboy. And then, um, yeah, shout out to Uno. Uh, it was man. dope. It yeah. was a dope power battle. I was gonna let you know that I have the yeah. tape. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll release it sometime Ooh, soon. But yo, nothing it. but power um, moves. Nothing power but power moves. moves. Nothing but power maybe a few tricks here and there. Yeah. Maybe a few tricks here and yeah. there. But big shout out to like Airstep. Like uh, uh, you know, they have some of the dopest pop mong powers. So like um, yep. I have to show some love on that end. And I know um, you know Minnesota. They they got their own uh, heavy power haters out there. And uh, yeah, uh, the one and everyone. But you know, you know. Yeah. But like I had to get. I had to do that quick plug because uh, uh, you know that was. I thought about it, it was like that that call I battle was not I mean the only no. Hmong yeah, uh, uh, you're in, right. in front uh, like battle that we battled, but we did garage battle with like a Uno and them and Airstep and you know, like during that time, like if anything, it, it got to that point where we were just trying to uplift each other, you know, like hip hop's competitive oh, wow. competitive culture, right? And, and uh, we're here to beat grow. Yeah, um, the, the, the only thing so, yeah. it's yeah. funny the only you thing reminded me the first time I ever met Airsteps and that moment was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only thing I gotta say, guys, is that like, even though you guys caught out wizards, you know, it's like what I tell my uh, my youth and my mentees. You know, um, the only guys that are gonna share those experiences with you is your opponent. So later on, if you, even though you caught them out, they'll probably end up being your best friends. You yeah. know, because the only guys yeah. that remember that is is them. Yeah. And shout out to wizards. You know, I understand you guys too. You know, like back then, I, I don't think the scene is how it is right now, because back then everybody was hungry. Everybody wanted to make a name, you know, because I got to say Wizards was really, really competitive for a period of time, you know, and everybody was trying to make noise. So a lot of love yeah. and respect to you guys for talking about that. Yeah. Like, hey, I love it. Hey, but I want to also say that we don't even know, I, till this day, I don't even know if the real, really the real wizard. <laughs> oh, well, I also want to say that too. I don't know. Did you hear that? Right. Gary, did you ever hear that story, though? Did you ever hear that story? You know what, man? Like, um, I, I may have, but I'm going to ask my crew later on to, <laughs> to see. Because there's so many members in Wizards, guys. Like, yeah. Wizards, you yeah. know, and, and we'll touch base on that later. But, like, there's so many 
stories and you know I, i've heard through the ogs triple ogs you know and to the new cats right now and it's like you know maybe um maybe i gotta do some more research but i love it and you guys you know you guys are talking to me about it because even for me you know we'll, we'll touch base more about my wizard roots later on too and you know like i don't go way 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 back you know what i mean so um but yeah so go ahead you know, it's crazy that you guys brought up Rudder, too, because, like, I remember being in middle school and um, seeing all the Hmong B-boys there practicing, and, you know, they're like, yo, we're going to go battle the Rudder B-boys. I was like, Rudder B-boys? Who are these people? You know what I mean? Like, for me growing up in Sacramento, I, I, I was a sheltered kid, so I wasn't allowed to go out a lot, and so I didn't really know the community like that. But I, I realized that it wasn't until I started dancing, getting into the community, that these Rudder B-Boys were the same people in the same community that I'm still dancing in, you know what I mean, Sacramento. And so yeah. when I started dancing, um, there, were, there weren't a lot of Hmong, like, choreo dancers or Hmong freestylers, you know, that, that just did locking or popping. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I was, like, one of the only ones who did it. Oh, definitely you were, bro. Definitely. locking. Yeah. Uh, he was one of the only Hmong lockers that I've ever known. And then I had, a, I had another homie named B Tao, and he was popping. He was popping, uh, and he was sick, bro. He performed among me. He bro. Performed before I even started dancing. He was killing it among New Year's, man. I was like, what the heck? who the heck is this kid? You know, and so I, I hooked up with them. I trained with them a lot. Those are those are my like community dance members at that time yeah. when uh when the Hmong B boy community was flourishing. Like yeah. when I got into dancing, there were Hmong B boys everywhere. They were having battles everywhere. They were have almost like every weekend, at least once a month. You know, like I my first um completely Hmong B boy dance, like B boy battle was at uh Manning Up Three. Damn! Up three, manning up three, hosted by Air Steps, and yeah, that was actually my first b-boy competition I entered. And you know, popping in a b-boy competition, but those are good times. You know, I I was I had no intentions of going far in that. I was just doing it just for fun, and you know, I I enjoyed it. I love the b-boy community. You know, I. I was one of the few dancers who just went to b-boy battles just to watch a b-boy battle you know and i was the, i was the, the one entering the ciphers mm. popping yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Really poppers yeah. around yeah. in sacramento yeah. there's only a few you know uh yeah, and yeah man it's it was, like it was it was crazy. Pretty, you know it's pretty crazy man because even when i was coming up you know, I wasn't too heavily involved in the Hmong community, just to be completely honest, man. I, w I came up around Marcus. We had, you know, Mexican, white, black. So my whole group was already diverse. So we weren't in a heavily, even though there was a Hmong community, it, I was more involved in another Rhythm Rockers, which is, you know, we all know that Rhythm Rockers is super diverse. So mm. there was not really Hmong people I was around until... I went to Valley High School, and then I met all these other dance crews. Man, I'm talking about Unleashed. I'm talking about, what is it, Rocket Squad. Uh, we had freaking exclusive crew. This is all the younger generations, you know, in my era, at least, you know. And hey, B was there, right? Squad. Yeah, Nine. Shout out to Nine. B was the reason why Valley High School was popping, man. Everybody yeah. showed up. Everybody yeah. went there. Everybody shout out to all, B. Shout out to B, yeah, man. B, I B held it down over there for a minute. Yeah. 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 Because man, Valley High School was packed. I'm talking about you went there and there was like eight, nine, ten crews, and everybody's just looking at each other like, Yeah, this is our this is our circle. Don't come over here. You know, it was it was intense. So that, I think that's so dope that you got to live that that you got to live to see like the abundance of that many crews too. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's that was that's really dope, man. Yeah. yeah, and we beefed it, man. Like we beefed it, like like yeah. straight up. Like he, me and Tom, my boy Dummy, woo! It was not fun in the beginning, man. Me and Tom were on each other. I was like, man, this dude ain't that good, and he's like, man, this dude ain't that good. We used to beef it all the time, but now me and my boy, that's like one of my best friends, man. Shout out to my boy Tom Dummy, man. My boy out here doing it too. But I remember, man, we, we used to 
we used to go at it with everybody, man. It's like, nah, nobody's your friend. If they're not in your crew, they're not your friend. <laughs> yeah, man, it was intense, man. Because we were, you know, we were young, we were hungry, we we're trying to prove ourselves, you know. And so at that time, I was at that time I wasn't even in Rhythm Rockers anymore. I I was in Basic Squad. I was in a crew with uh, Uno's little brother, Dose. So that's my boy Chu, you know. Until Chu, you know, joined Unleashed, and then that's that's why we had that that little. I had that little that rivalry with those guys where I'm like, nah, man, like, oh, we went to at least, nah, man, we're not cool. We, we, we go, we're going to throw down. <laughs> but then, you know, all, it, all, all in all, it was love, man. They, all, I'm yeah. glad that yeah. I got to experience that. And I mean, even you guys came around too, you know, cause I remember the first time I met villain and impact, you know, and when we were at Valley, you know, when you guys came in, everybody's like, oh, that, that's a villain, that's villain and impact. That's villain and impact. I'm like, who the hell is villain and impact? <laughs> it's like, and then Marcus like, man, and I told asked Marcus, I was like, Villain and Impact. He's like, dude, you don't remember? We we practiced with them at the Lemon Hill Community Center. I was like, Oh, it's the Asian guy with the long dreadlocks. He's like, Yeah, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So the first time I actually officially met you guys was at the Lemon Hill Community Center. Remember the man, that spot was that was one of the underground spots too, man. That's true, man. I mean, you know, the cool part about it, that um, we're touching base off of right now, that it's like really cool about what hip hop provides competition, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you know, we're competitive. Yeah. It might it might seem like in a, a, a really aggressive way. I feel like um, we as young kids during that time we might not understand it, but it actually provides us uh, with growth, right? And understanding uh, our weaknesses and our, also our strength. And um, I also, uh, would say I totally relate to all you guys about uh just having that competitive vibe sometimes. Even sometimes not competitive, like I say, just hitting a cipher, right? Just yeah. jumping in and it's discovering yourself within a, a community that you have a, a similar uh, cultural background with, but like you might not dance the same style, but you know you can still relate with the same music and same level what hip hop is, yeah. right? Yeah. And so um I think that's that's super dope, man, to see that uh we there. I'm seeing a lot of parallel story uh, parallel story and in interweaving of uh even though we might not uh have like the same brought up at the same time but there's like like even b b being at valley uh you know what i mean like i saw b since rudder you know what i mean a, a b was like with big john and big john was a big influence on b and, and big john if y'all don't know big john but he's a he's a oh, heavily he's a big he's a big mentor that i feel like uh, uh that's sometime i not uh uh uh, be mentioned because he's a white guy, right? He's a big yeah. white guy that pretty much, uh, in a nutshell, he's a he's a supervisor that provided an absolute program for b boys and not just yeah. b boy, mom b boys and yeah. b girls. You know what I'm saying? And like, um, and it got to the point where it was not just breakers and there was dancers that came, you know, and like he he provided that outlet uh, and for for villain I to even be there for so long even after we finished our 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 time at James Rudder. You know, I mean, we still came back. We still came back session there every time with a, a crew with the new ge generations like B them to all the way to his younger brother, you know, and like to have Airstep uh, grow up from that that era too. So that's pretty interesting to see all this uh, um, story kind of like somehow tied together in some way. So um, man, we, gotta, we, may, we gotta make we gotta sew a, a storytelling quilt now, man. Hey, that's <laughs> Hey, that's, that's dope. Right. That's tight. That would be tight. You know what I'm saying? Oh that'll man. Oh, we got we got Era and Dummy tuned in too, man. What's up, my brothers? What's oh, up, brothers? What's up, that man? Was, uh, Ricky, man. Y'all don't know Ricky yeah. is probably the first B boy Bro. to ever do one, no, to to do one hand out. air flare, a multiple yeah, one hand out air flare. Bro, Ricky. Two thousand six. Shout out to Era. Two thousand five, Ricky, man, dude. That he was yeah. Korean power bro i don't care what nobody says i might be a little biased when i say it though man my boy's the yeah. first to do the double air flips in a battle bro come on hey <laughs> I, I believe that i'm not gonna i would, lie. I would confirm that too because i confirm the first dude that i've seen it from so yeah. it's first guy that i've seen it from in person you can yeah. dj will confirm yeah. that as well you know yeah I mean? that was you crazy gotta, you know hey man you even got a little mock and all those guys sharing that I'm like yeah dude this dude really did it so yeah, yeah. Hey, man that's 2006 in a jam at a battle not at practice you know what i'm saying yeah and he kept yep. going he did two yeah. times in a row come on man <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I mean, just to, uh, to kind of like i guess um keep us on track a little bit but at the same time like um 
wind uh, uh, kind of like tie everything together. I just want to uh, remind our Hmong people out there who's tuning in that uh, we have some amazing Hmong dancer back then and still here. You know, what I mean, that yes. have have coined, uh, have uh, have did many important things that pioneer a lot of hip hop movement to hip hop like uh, to what do you call it, hip hop involvement and growth as well. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, again, uh, if you're just tuning in, again, today we're talking about the origin story. We're just kind of talking about our story and uh, our upbringing and our experience a little bit. Um, we are going to dive into more hip-hop experience on the next episode, too. Uh, that one, we will talk more into our, you know, our struggles, our uh, accomplishments, our experience within hip-hop culture. Because, again, uh, as youth, we, when we grew, when we were growing up, we don't even know what we're doing hip-hop, especially during that time, right? A lot of us, some of us already knew because you grew up in that era where hip-hop was already known as hip-hop, right? But yeah. for Bill and I, even probably even Gary, like we were talking about dancing to trance music back then. We didn't even know what the heck uh, we were doing, but we were we were doing what we got to do, you know what I mean? Because we just loved moving, moving that way. So um, uh, if anything, you're tuning in to right now um, – Hmong Hip Hop Heritage, Episode 1, The Origin. Um, we cover a little bit about who we are in the beginning, how we yeah. started dancing, and then uh, we kind of uh, we kind of talk more about even our dance name, right? I, I know um, that's our alias, but I feel like hip-hop provides us an alias that uh, give us identity, and that's something that's really important that I felt like we all could relate to, and we could speak even more on that later on uh, in the other episode, which is we're going to dive deep, really deep, and... Um, but today we're just literally just kind of just kind of giving a quick little introduction, a little uh, uh, a little of origin story of where who we are and where we come from, and um, I guess uh, you know we're, we're getting to that point where it's almost it's pretty much an hour already. Uh, we like to keep this conversation an hour to our uh, you know a little bit over an hour, but like uh, other than that, like is there anything you guys want to address about yourself? At the moment, if not, we'll, we'll jump to some of the questions that uh, I know we have asked uh, our audience uh, to provide some questions. I would love to answer some of the questions for them too. But yeah, man, if you guys yeah. have anything you guys want to share, anything more about the hip hop dance community when you started, you know what I mean? I would love to hear. I'm pretty sure the audience would love to hear too. Um, you know, the only thing I want to add is that um, uh, back then we had a lot of uh, music influence from. You know bands like Raquel, uh, Lil Susie, right? A lot of the uh, the great the greatest freestyle hits back then, and you know, and I, I just remember breaking and to these music that were always on a loop, you know, because mixtapes and stuff they weren't as accessible. So, mm -hmm. true that. I I I remember that too. I mean, man, to find music during my time. Man, Munch and Sai, I'm not sure about y'all time. Y'all probably got like, like really good, easy access to music. But during our time, I don't know. It was hard to find music. Nah, man, I was lying I, everything. This is how, <laughs> yeah, this is how I did it. I did, I did with well, my did. beats, right? So during that time when we started, I we we didn't have didn't have like internet to download music. What I did was I had like a tape, right? That I wasn't using. It was like a tape of I don't even know what it was. It's just a it's just a tape of some of, of some kind of other music. I would put it into that. Uh, tape player oh, right. and i would turn it i would turn yeah. it on to the, the i would turn on the radio right and i would listen to a station that i liked that had like a, a song that i would want to break to and i'll press record so i was recording the radio station's music right and then if it was a track that i liked i was like oh i could dance i could break to this then i would press record and i would break right and i would, and once it was done i would stop it then i would have that track for the next time right and then if, and I would change to like a bunch of different stations. That's how I was like navigating with music at that time. Again, didn't know what kind of music to be dancing to. What was the right kind of music to be breaking to? You know what I mean at that time. Um, but that that was one way of how I was. Uh, you know what I mean. Music is everything, right? When you break, you know what I mean. And when you dance in general, right? So uh, I w that was how I was finding the right kind of music that was moving me because obviously. If it's not moving you, you're going to have a hard session. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? So um, was, that was. I was getting down to paradise, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, man. Anything that moved yeah. you, you know, at that time. So that, that, that was one of my, uh, I would say, early times of like finding. And if anything, just like, you know, hip hop, just like, you know, digging through music. I didn't know any, what I was doing then till afterwards. Yeah, for me, I was just using, I was using YouTube and LimeWire, but. I feel like the funnest part of uh, how I started was just 
I dug backwards, you know, I had to go into history to find good music at that time. And like, I, I, you know, I didn't know anything about music or anything about hip hop. So for me, it was a whole discovery journey of what hip hop even meant at, at like at a pre adult age. So, you know, I, I dug backwards. I went towards craft work. I went towards uh, all the techno stuff, hip hop, you know, I, I had to figure out what what did poppers even dance to? You know, what is funk music? Is that the same thing as hip hop music? Like, what is that? What the heck is James Brown? You know, so you like, oh, yeah. for me, like, yeah, just getting into dance, I had to learn my history. You know, whereas you guys kind of started it during that phase of history. You know, so it was it's a trip. Yeah, man. Luckily for me, I always just be like, you know, when somebody was playing music, like, hey, hey, what song is that? I have my little notebook or write it down. Like, I'm going to go look that up later. I'm lying more. Yo. <laughs> so, right. so that's what I did. That's how I found my music, man. I was just like, hey, 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 what song is that? Hey, let me see that song. Hey, back then people were sticking to that. Like, nah, <laughs> like, nah this, this, this is my secret track. I'm going to play every time I'm here only. So man, yeah, we had that. Man. True, I, I I remember that time too, where like uh, even sharing music was uh re- was really competitive. Like yeah, you wouldn't want to share yeah. the music, and uh, I, I feel like that's that's part of hip hop that if you grew up during that time, you understood it is actually really fun, right? Uh, because you're not just competitive mo- uh, in movement, but you're competitive in the type of music that you have, because that's oh. like your your arsenal as well, right? Because like if you have that and you understand that song and and the DJ knows when to play and you know that music more than the other do, you have leverage, right? So uh, that's something that I feel like uh, was actually pretty cool. I'm not lying. Growing up as a as a hip hop dancer, right, a, a competitive um, b boy too, you know what I mean? Like uh, digging for music was part of the hip hop culture. Straight up, like you're a hip hop yep. head. We're talking about being a hip hop person, a hip hop student. You know what I mean? And like, um, yeah. uh, that's part of the experience of, of being a hip hopper is that you had to know how to dig your own music. Uh, and whether you're Ooh. whether you're, whether you're a, a DJ or you're a dancer, and that's part of the freaking that's part of the culture. That's part of the lifestyle. If you think about it. And yeah, like, I'm telling you, if it if, if the music doesn't move you, man, it's gonna yeah. be hard. Bro, Your journey is gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah. digging music is like practicing it in itself, man. I agree. <laughs> that's right. That's right, right, man. That's like, yeah, that's right, I man. I remember digging, uh, uh, I have a bunch of burnt CD, right? I remember villain threw it away one time. I got hella mad at villain. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. Bill, remember that? I, think it was like a, I don't know. I think it was a. Yeah. I don't know, man. Or, I, oh, no, either villain threw remember. away or a villain. Uh, I don't. I don't throw. Like I don't throw. I don't throw away music, man. Well, I don't. I don't remember. I just remember it was like a case. It was like a case of my CD. And, and, and villain know me. I'm. I'm a, a true historian. I like to collect everything. You know what I mean? Like, um, like uh, even our videos. Like I, I have all the, our old videos still in like um CDs. And during that time, I have, I have a, a a rack of CD that honestly I don't think I will ever listen to it. But I just like to hold it, hold it, because I know that in case I need it. But um, I just remember it. So I like. Yeah, man, that's part of that's part of the hip hop culture, and I feel like um, for us as Hmong dancers and Hmong Hmong hip hoppers, just to get to that realm of understanding what what it is to be a, a, a artist in that that culture, right, and the lifestyle, and for us to understand that music is a big part of it, because uh, without music, we can't dance, you know. Yes. And yeah. so, um, and it's it's also part of the uh, for us to continue to find inspiration and growth as a as mover and as a people too, as an individual. So. Um, yeah, man. Like maybe, maybe let's uh, you guys down jump into like maybe like two, three questions that um that are uh, yeah. Since we're having, since we're having, uh, since we're kind of going over time, let's just take two questions. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. I have yeah, that's uh, fine. if you guys mind, I ha- I, I um I kind of snapped sh- sh- uh, shot some of the uh, questions. Unless you guys, I have one right now that I think I want to uh, kind of ask you guys. Um, uh, this is from Lang Tao. Um, at oh, what's which up, point? Man? Yeah, at what point? Did you all understand the historical and cultural depth of your styles and its relevance to hip hop? What role does the Hmong community play within hip hop? So maybe we'll just start with one, the part one of that is that at which point do you all understand the historical slash cultural depth of your styles and its relevance to hip hop? Anyone want to dive in there? Uh, well, we're popping. You know, there's, there's so much controversy for popping. You know, it it kind of falls under this umbrella of hip hop, 
but at the same time, it is its own culture. You know, it wasn't. It's not one of the four elements of hip hop, but it's a. Uh, it's born from funk. You know what I mean? And, I mean, and, you, know, it, it has, it, you know what? I like to relate it to street dance culture more so than just hip hop culture because yeah. that's exactly what it is. It's just street dance. You know, people, when people pop, you know, they're, they're yep. balancing. That's they're, a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Music and same thing with locking. Locking is a street, uh, well, locking was originally a club dance. You know what I mean? It was created by Don Campbell Lock in the club. So eventually, you know, people got to battling. They battle in the club, just like how B-Boys did, too. So at the end of the day, all of this street dance culture, and it ties in with hip-hop because hip-hop is like that, you know. They, hip-hop goes head-to-head with each other. I yeah. agree. I agree with you on that for sure. Um, and it just to kind of even help educate our people even more that uh, tune in on that question is like, um, what Sai said was uh, it's important, it's true. Uh, 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 popping and locking, it, it's, it's more of its own umbrella of street dance, you know? And then like uh, breaking is definitely uh, one of the main element of hip hop. You know, it, it is one of the four elements. Again, if you don't know, that's uh, DJ and graffiti art. Um, MC, which is like considered rapping in like uh, breaking, right? Which is the movement. So um, uh, there's many other elements within hip hop, like knowledge and uh, you know beatboxing and all that stuff. Even fashion is one, you know. And so like um, to our to our audience right now, just give me as a um, uh, just kind of reflecting on what uh, my my boy Sai mentioned there. Yeah, you know, there's if you understand what street dance is there's many type of street dance out there even like crump is to consider a, a, its own uh, umbrella too you know what i mean but again i'm not going to speak so much highly on uh, some other style because i i myself is not an expert on some of those you know and like uh, side part could uh, uh school is and educated a little better but um on those stuff but like um yeah, yeah. I, agree I, I follow mr wiggles a lot you know what i mean like mr wiggles is like to me the epitome of what a hip-hop dancer is because he does everything you know so if you have questions about whether your dance style is related to hip hop, you know, research Mr. Wiggles, because uh, there is grooves within hip hop that is not break dancing. You know what I mean? And there, there are there are styles under hip hop that is not break dancing. It's not locking or 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 popping. You know, it's its own entity. And you know, that's that's kind of how hip hop choreography kind of came together. You know, a lot of people now they're not exactly doing hip hop choreography just because just based off foundations, based off grooves, but it's still dance at the end of the day. It's still, it has hip hop roots, it has hip hop influence and inspirations. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all still a family of dance. I agree. It's an, uh, it's considered within the hip hop culture lifestyle, you know, like just a yeah. lot of, the, you know, that street lifestyle that's part of it. So, um, dude. I totally agree with you. How about let, you guys will move on to the next question? Just to kind of give more uh, question opportunity. But like, was that a two part question though? Uh, or, there was a two or, part. You guys want to answer the oh. uh, second part? The second part was uh, uh, pretty much like what role does the Hmong community play within hip hop? And I feel <laughs> like we talked a little bit about that earlier in terms of our conversation. But mm-hmm. if you guys want to share or add more? Um, I feel like I feel like uh, I feel like the next the next. Uh, uh, the next topic, we'll even cover a little bit of that too. So if we want to wait for that, we could do that too. Yeah. Oh, I like this question here. Though. This question from um, go. Damn, honestly, sorry, man. I can't fully read my mom, but go, go lot, go lot, Yang. Um, hey, make fun of me if I want, but like, at the same time, that's when I read her question. Her question is, um, when was that turning point when each one of you realized that it was time to take your dancing from the streets, home, garage, schools to the next level. Mm. Oh man, that's that a pretty good, good question. Good, that's a pretty good, 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 good question, actually. You know, yeah. what was that time you realized that, like, no more garage session, no more garage battling, um, no more like schools battling callouts or you know? Yeah, man. So for me, it would be um, my first trip out of state ever. You know what I'm saying? I went to Seattle for a jam called uh, Queen 16, hosted by my boy Tim Chips. You know, and that event, man, that event was the one that kind of like flipped the script for me where I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm all in, you know, because, yeah, man, I remember I went there and, you know, that's the first time I ever been to kind of a big event. 
you know, seeing freaking Massive Monkeys, seeing crews from out of state. This is when I was like barely in legendary steps, trying to get into Flexible Flav. And then we had our, our crew members from Europe come through. So we had Eddie from Europe and he entered the future. And then we had Rufy here and we went out there. We mobbed, we, we had like, we mobbed out there. We had like 15 people, you know, and we went and in Seattle, you know, and this is my first time in a different scene. And I was always told that, hey man, when you go to a different scene and dancing and you don't know nobody, it's just you and your crew, nobody else. And then when I went, it was like, everybody just looked at us like, who are these guys? Like, you know, like nobody from their scene knew who we were. And that's when I got a real taste of the breaking scene. That's when I was like, you know, I mean, I'm saying that, you know, the scene here was, it was, it's a great scene, but you know, that's the first time you actually tasted, I actually tasted the scene outside of Sacramento, outside of Stockton, California. It was actually a different state. And there was a lot of high level dancers and everybody was very competitive because nobody knew who we were. So we're going into their city and they're like, oh, who the heck are these guys? You know, and that that event changed my life. That made me like, all right, I'm I'm gonna go around now. I'm gonna travel. Like I'm a I'm alert. I'm gonna I'm gonna experience all this. You know, so that's when I decided is like, hey man, no more just sticking in my garage and doing this, man. I gotta get out there, I gotta get out of this, you know, and that's what really changed it for me. So that one event. You know, I was like, I was 17. Yeah, 17 at that time. So, yeah, that was for me. That's the event that changed it all for me, man. Uh, I, I can speak on that for me. Uh, you know, I I think, well, I mean, there are so many moments for me. Uh, gosh, I think the biggest one was when I finally did a workshop with Marcus Edgerlin. And we did a workshop for Capital Roots from Sacramento. And we did, uh, the workshop was called The Five. And what that whole workshop was for, it was a nonprofit. And we did the workshop at the same time with five other cities all across California, all at the same time. And, you know, we organized for a huge fundraiser. I forgot exactly what it was for, but, you know, that was the moment I was like, yo, I, I'm on I'm on a workshop with huge choreographers, huge well-known choreographers all all across California, and you know it was it was just an eye-opening a moment for me to just be like, wow, I, I could really be up here with them. You know? I mean, I mean, for me, I think for me, when I realized that, uh, I guess taking. I guess what taking hip hop out of um, pretty much when that 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 pivotal change in my life where I want to pretty much I guess the question is pursuing uh, hip hop at a higher level right compared to just doing it at home or so on. I feel like for me like it was a constant journey because I, I I didn't know what I could do with it, you know. Compared to maybe like uh, you guys have experienced uh, a little more thing happening like in hip -hop race, you you've seen stuff that are capable and uh stuff that are achievable i think that's why i guess i'm trying to say um where villain and i we were growing up with it we honestly i remember when i i uh villain we even told ourselves that when we went our first competition we were just gonna quit <laughs> you know we were like we we're just gonna stop we were like uh so so we were like okay let's you know let's win our first competition and let's just you know when we get there we're stop right because obviously um there were other stuff that we thought that might be better like going to college and pursuing other stuff right uh even our parents was not fully supportive of us during dancing during time too you know what i mean um, they were but not fully you know what i mean um but i feel like what i said uh, we took it step uh, one step at a time because each little accomplishment kind of led to another you know like i uh, we we told ourselves we we're gonna stop after our first jam we won our first jam after that we we're like you know what we could do now we could go over there and compete with those other guys we did that we yeah. won that beat them you know what next time Let's fly to France or let's fly to the next country and like uh, compete. We're not gonna stop until we uh, win uh, another soil, another country. Boom! That happened. After that, yeah. there's stuff that happened that came along with that. Uh, wanted to get there, right? Like now, I was like, oh, now I'm like, oh shoot, I want to get in a music video. Oh, you know. And so like, I feel like um, from uh, after how I uh, I I think uh, um, Bill and I, but Bill can speak on his back. But for mine was uh, I kind of took everything step by uh, one one like step at a time because uh i just didn't know what was capable until i got there if that makes sense you know so yeah, like you're I remember, just manifesting 
Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's true. Yeah. Like I would write stuff down. I would write stuff down and goals, even with movement, right? Like I will say at the end mm-hmm. of this month, I'm gonna do two air flirt. At the end of the next month, I'm gonna do five, right? Or I'm gonna learn that combo. You know what I mean? So so I feel like for me during that time, it was more like taking it, making it happen at the moment, in the moment. Um, but when I realized that uh, um, it's time to elevate outside of it was when uh, usually, you know, we all get this, right? When we were, we're just not that motivated anymore. And I feel like yeah. that for me, I remember one of my pivotal moments was when when we got we got done with uh, high school. And uh, I just remember not being so inspired because I would battle. We would battle everyone in NorCal. Right. And I was so tired of battling people in NorCal. I was like, no, it's time to do something else. So that's why uh, and I, we started venturing out to SoCal and other states and city. And that, I feel like that was one pivotal moment where I could say that I could say that it was a turning point where I was like, no more staying, I guess, for me my my garage was always like a, a a place for growth right so i wouldn't say that's like a place where um i would say no to but it's more like um being comfortable in my surrounding my area my community so it's kind of like branching out to discover new new stuff so socal was a big change for me when i moved out of socal and that was something that definitely was part of my uh discovery of uh finding what's that was when i wanted to find something more bigger than just what i've been doing so yeah nice yeah, I mean, I, I feel like my experience is very similar to Impact. Pretty much, like, he pretty much said it without having to, like, regurgitate every word. <laughs> I know we're, like, cutting on time, too, right now. But, um, yeah, it was just pretty much kind of just snowball, you know, on its own. We set our own goals, and we didn't know it. We thought, we because during that time when we were growing up, there wasn't, like, dancers that were even making it as anything. You know what I mean? There weren't even any Hmong dancers that were out there that we felt like, oh, we should follow in their footsteps. So, if anything... We were just kind of like paving the way, but not really even knowing like where we were going. You get what I mean? But we had, a, if anything, we have goals though, you know, uh, even though we like, uh, once we finish one thing, we're like, okay, what should we do now? Let's try that. Let's see if we could make that happen. You know, so it was a lot of like, yeah, trial and error, just like during that time when we were learning breaking moves. Nowadays, everyone gets it through so, so much of a faster access through like the internet, you know, on YouTube, anything. You could get it so fast. During that time for us, we were just like, didn't really know, you know, we didn't really know anyone to follow or like look up to even, you know, um, but we, we just, yeah, I think it was just all for the love of it in the end, you know, why we went so far too. It was never so much that we, we wanted to be the best or we wanted to do this and that was it. It was just like, we love doing it so much that we just never quit. And we, uh, it was something that truly, we really had fun with it. You know, it was really fun to, uh, for us. And I'm sure y'all could agree with that too, you know, so if it wasn't, fun or we didn't enjoy doing it then we wouldn't have taken it that far i would have never gone to like you know another <clears throat> city and battle if i didn't didn't really enjoy that doing that you know what i mean so i think in the end it, it, as simple as it, as simple as it, as it is it was just because we also just really love doing it too you know what i mean and that just opened that door a lot of work though for sure so that was neat oh, definitely <laughs> All the that. Tears is worth it i love it I love that question. I think this question is definitely a question that leads us into uh, our next episode, which is episode two, hip hop experience. Uh, there's a lot of great questions that uh, we saw from our, our our audience that are engaging with us. Uh, just giving as a heads up, we are we are pretty much probably going to answer a lot of those questions through these episodes that are coming up, which is uh, episode two. Uh, next one is about uh, hip hop experience and. We'll definitely dive more into our <laughs> adversities, our struggles, our, our accomplishments, um, even parental support, you know what I mean? The issues with that, role models, how we give back to the community and, and all that stuff. I mean, we saw there's a lot of great questions about uh, stuff like that. So I, I promise you guys we will definitely answer some a mo- majority of all the questions that have been um, posted on uh, our comments. And uh, if anything, tune in to our next one on Thursday. Which is coming up this week already, which is on the um, the twentieth of um, this, which is Thursday, yeah, That's coming nice. up Thursday, yeah, two days pretty much. So tune in again, uh, episode two, Hmong Hip Hop Heritage. Uh, episode two is gonna be about hip hop experience, and it's gonna be about pretty much, you know, we're gonna sure dive deeper into what we have uh, done, uh, what we have like uh, gone through in order to even accomplish what we want to do um and so on so uh yeah so make sure you tune in um please feel free to uh uh comment still on the uh the live the live is still going to be saved onto the our uh our page on facebook 
uh, you could keep watching it over and over. And if anything, please share it with your friends, family. Again, this is um, Mong Hip Hop Heritage, uh, hosted by uh, Ryan, Sive, Dylan. We got Gary, but Gary's not, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure Gary's in right now, but uh, Gary and myself. So just want to give you guys, uh, again, we are doing our best to uh, take our time right now just to kind of provide some sort of education, uh, same time provide some source of unity during this time too far people. At the same time, if anything, progress and growth uh, for the future. And so thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. You guys want to say anything before we tune out? Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys Thursday. Yes, and if you guys, again, tune in on our next episode, you don't want to miss that one. All of the journey and everything is going to be in there. So thank you all for tuning in. Yeah, thanks for tuning in with every everything that we spoke about. We're going to, like Impact said too, a lot of these questions that you guys asked and posted up, we will be question answering most of those questions in the next episode. So we don't want to get into it too much on this episode. Again, this one was just the origin story about us. So thank you guys. Appreciate you. Love all of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Gary's there. Gary, you want to say something before we head out or? Solid. All right. Oh, I don't think we hear you, Gary. We can't hear you. You're muted. You might be mute. You hear? I'm not sure if your uh, your mic's working. But um, yeah, yeah he, you're muted, Gary. It's all good. You will say something uh, next time. We'll start with you first. All right. Uh, other than that, guys, thank you yeah. so much for tuning in again. This is Mong Hip Hop's uh, Heritage. We are doing our best to help y'all. So thank you so much for tuning in. We love you guys. See you Thanks Thursday, so 6 p.m. PST time. Again, we'll talk more about hip hop experience. Peace, y'all. Much love.